In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make a personalized Google Map. It's very simple to do, and so many applications you can use it for. First thing you need to do is to go to maps.google.com, and you should be signed in to your account when you're doing this. You can, uh, you'll can you notice up on the top right, it will show if you're signed in or not. If you're not signed in, you'll see a box that says sign in here. So you want to be sure that you're signed in for this because you have an opportunity to go to your maps. It is personalized maps that you can make. I'm doing this in Google Maps Lite. So if you have some sort of prompt, you just want to get to a spot where it says My Maps or Create My Maps. Your view might be a little different when you first launch this. So I'm going to click on My Maps. And at this place, I'm uh, at this point, I'm looking for the button that says Create. Now I could see all of my maps that I've made before, and if you do make a bunch of maps, then you can click here and see them all at once. It takes you into this kind of a view. And again, it takes you to mapsengine.google.com, which is another route to get to this. Um, it's the tool that's, that's using it. So I can go to Maps Engine, and I can go to Created by Me or Shared with Me, or I can go to Classic My Maps. I want to be in Maps Engine to make this though. So these are a bunch of maps that I've been making for different different purposes. So you might also have seen this view. Um, now that I've gone into this view, I might as well uh, share this. And you can go from this way also. Google Maps Engine, create a new map. So when you're uh, when you've done that, you'll start to notice some of the features that you're used to seeing when you're using Google Apps. First of all, it's an untitled map. So the first thing I do is I create, I click on this and you can title it. So I'm going to call this a, a demo map and you can add a description if you'd like and then save it. And then the next step I do, I always do when I'm working with a Google app is I go to the share features. So it depends on what you want to use this map for. If you're going to use this with a bunch of students and you want everyone collaborating on um, uh, this map, then you're going to have to, I'm going to skip this, uh, you're going to have to leave the share settings open. If you want it private between you and just specific people, you can enter their email addresses here and change uh, whether they can just view it or they can edit it. Um, so if you're doing something that shows, for example, where students live, that is not something that you would want to be public um, shown all over. So I wouldn't um, recommend I'm showing students addresses and their names, how to get to them. And you need to think about what you're, um, what you're placing on the map. I'm going to change this though. I'm going to create a map uh, that I want all students to collaborate on. So I'm going to put anyone with a link and I'm going to put this as can edit. That means they can go in. I have to trust them. We have to talk good digital citizenship about not changing other people's answers um, and what they've put on here. So I'm going to leave can edit and save. Now it's going to give me a link that I can share this map. Um, we'll kind of look back at that um, later. I'm going to cancel and I'm going to get to the work of uh, how to add onto this map. So there's a couple of different things you can do. Uh, in my previous video, I showed how you can import a layer uh, from a spreadsheet of information. But in this case, what if I wanted to send all my students to the link that I just had access to? And I wanted them to add in their own um, uh, information. So let's say we're doing uh, the new way of doing a state report, or you could do um, uh, my favorite um, location that I've ever been to, or a place I want to see someday in my life, you know, my bucket list place, or whatever you want to call it. I'm, I'm going to go with the state report. Um, and I'm going to type in Ravenswood, uh, West Virginia. Let me say I'm doing West Virginia, and I just I don't even need I don't even need a city in West Virginia. I'm just going to type in that state, and it's going to take me to that location. And you can see here uh, that it is in green. So you'll first have a place marker that's green. Now, if you want this to be your first location then you uh, have to come up to the top here and click on the place marker where it says add marker. 
So I'll click on the marker and I will add it wherever I want in West Virginia. Uh, I'm going to put it in Charleston. And once I put that on here, now I can title it whatever I like. So maybe I'm going to say uh, Lisa and West Virginia. And I can put content in here, uh, any kind of information I want. Let's say I'm going to be um, doing some information, um, information report about this um, population. Um, I could do, um, oh, whoops, I pushed return and it saved it. Uh, if I want to go back and edit, I just click on the pencil. Um, I could do all sorts of information here. Uh, one way I've been using it with students is they'll write it by hand first. Uh, we'll edit uh, or they'll do it on a Google document, which is really simple because then they can just copy and paste it into this text field. Another option is then to add an image or a video. So if a student had done a, a digital project, maybe they made a video about uh, West Virginia, then they could um, uh, add the image, you know, add the YouTube URL here, or you could do a video search about West Virginia, or I'm going to do an image URL, or I can actually search for it. So let me go to, to search for images of West Virginia. Oh, it's going to be all map versions. Well, this reminds me of West Virginia. I actually lived there. That's why I was choosing that. And so I'm going to select that image. And there's an image of West Virginia. I can um, include any other information I want. You can include another image by clicking on the plus uh, right here. If you don't like it, you can also trash it. So if I want to do another one, I can kind of come back and um, oops, um, scroll through. And maybe I'm going to click uh, this waterfall. No, I'm going to go down to this lake. And select. And now I've got two images on here, which is kind of nice. You can um, have a whole series of images and video on here. Then I'll click Save. Students do have to click Save. And if they close this out, then when you hover over this and you click on it, it will show up. This is uh, who's the author of this. This is what the content is about, and then the writing would be down below with images that they could scroll through. It's great because the image also shows up over here, uh, the place marker. If I click on it here, it will also show up on the map. So when you have a lot of students who are um, putting in uh, place markers, um, it can um, start to fill up and they can select from all sorts of options. If I want to change that place marker, I hover over this and I click on the paint can. And I can change the shape of it. Maybe I want a star. I can change the color. I want it to be orange. And I can even go to more icons. Of course, there's tons of choices uh, that you can select from. I'm going to leave it as an orange star, though. Now, one of the great options, if I want to see this base map not in this form, I want it to be a satellite map, I click on this little arrow it seems somewhat hidden there, uh, and I um, can get options for all the different kinds of maps that I can have a view of. I like to do the satellite view. That's kind of a nice option. It just changes the, the view of it completely. Uh, and there's so many different things you can do if you are into, um, you want to measure the distances, um, you can connect uh, lines between the place markers, you can add directions, there's all sorts of um, options and ideas for this. Imagine if you were to make your own Google Literature chip, trip, like the website Google Lit Trips, and you placed, um, the Jerome Burgers created, you can place markers in the places where your story have taken place. Uh, if you're talking about history, the American Revolutionary War, and everyone took a different uh, war site and, and put their information this way, you as a teacher can also embed topics, and as a student, in, you know, clicks on this map, they can then open up a link and there might be information for them to gather knowledge from or to watch a video from. It's just a really neat and creative way to share your content. Uh, the other great piece is that all your students can be on this map at one time editing. It's a great collaborative tool.